In this video, I'll show a technique I frequently use to develop exits for trading strategies. It is the Hawks process. Its mathematical underpinnings are complex, but in practice, it is quite easy to conceptualize and use. I'll provide some basic intuition, Python code to compute it, and share a simple trading strategy utilizing the Hawks process that has pretty good performance. The Hawks process comes from the study of point processes, an area of statistics and probability theory. The Hawks process is a type of self-exciting process. Roughly speaking, a process is self-exciting if the occurrence of past events make the occurrence of future events more probable. Examples of self-exciting processes are volatility and volume in financial markets. Let's look at the case of volatility. This Python code is used to compute a normalized measure of the range on each candle. We load in data from a CSV. This is hourly Bitcoin data. Then we compute the average true range on logarithmic prices with a long look back. I have it set to two weeks or 336 candles. We compute the normalized range as the log high price minus the log low price divided by the average true range. Then we plot the closing price and the normalized range. Here is the plot of the Bitcoin closing price in green and the normalized range in blue. The normalized range gives us an idea about the volatility at each candle. Here is the crash that happened in March 2020. Pay attention to the normalized range. Once larger values start appearing, they start appearing more often. This is the self-exciting behavior. Large values of the range tend to be followed by additional large values of the range. This phenomenon is present in most financial markets. It's often called volatility clustering. Notice that after the crash, the volatility starts decreasing. The downtrend has fizzled out. Let's look at the Hawks process applied to the normalized range. Here is the crash of March 2020 again, with the Hawks process applied, plotted in orange. It effectively smooths the normalized range. Notice that it rises very quickly once volatility starts increasing, then decays slowly as the volatility starts decreasing. Later, we will use this Hawks process series to help find the end of trends. But first, let's look at the code for the Hawks process. The Hawks process is implemented in this function. It takes an input array, which will be our normalized range. It also has a parameter kappa that controls how quickly the output decays. Here's the Hawks process ran on the normalized range with different values of the kappa parameter. Smaller values of kappa lead to a longer decay time and a slower reaction, essentially more lag. First, we exponentiate the negative kappa value. I named it alpha. We will use this in a moment. We create an output array and initialize it with NAND values. We loop through the input array. We check if the previous output was a NAND value. If it is, we just copy the input. This is here because I often have NAND values at the beginning of my indicator series if there was not enough data for its entire look back yet. The actual Hawks process computation is all done on this line. We multiply the previous output by the alpha value and add the current input value. At the end, I multiply the output by the kappa value, as this loosely normalizes the output range at different values of kappa. This can be removed if desired. I originally learned about the Hawks process as applied to trading from a blogger named Trader with an 8. He used the Hawks process to build an indicator using signed volume. To be clear, I have no affiliation or contact with this guy, I'm just a fan of his work. I read everything he writes. I'll leave links to his article about that indicator and his blog. Let's return to our Hawks process on the normalized range. We can see that as a major price trend happens, volatility tends to increase, and as the volatility decays, the trend fizzles out. Let's quantify this behavior with some rolling thresholds. Here's the same area in time, but we compute rolling quantiles on the Hawks process, at 5% in red and 95% in blue, with a look back of one week. As the Hawks process crosses above the higher threshold, the volatility is increasing and a trend might be starting. And as it crosses below the lower threshold, the trend is typically weakening or ending. So with these thresholds, let's define a simple trading strategy. We keep track of the last time the Hawks process was below its lower threshold. Once it goes above the upper threshold, we look at the difference in the price change since it was last below the lower threshold. If it is positive, we take a long position. If it is negative, we take a short position. Here, we take a long position. We hold this position until the Hawks process crosses below the lower threshold. Let's look at the code for this strategy. This function computes the strategy signal. We pass it the closing price, the volatility Hawks process, and the look back for defining the thresholds. We create a signal array to denote the position at each candle. We define the upper and lower thresholds with a rolling quantile. I use 95% and 5%. We keep track of the last time the Hawks process was below the lower threshold with this variable. 
we loop through each candle. We check if the Hawks process is below the lower threshold. If it is, we set the current signal to zero and set the last below variable to the current index. We check if the Hawks process has crossed above the upper threshold. We check for a cross by verifying the current value is above the threshold and the previous value is below the threshold. We also check if the last below variable is above zero. We initialized it as negative one. So if it is below zero, that means the lower threshold has yet to be crossed and the strategy is still initializing. We find the price change from when the Hawks process was last below its lower threshold to the current close. If the price change was positive, we take a long position. And if the price change was negative, we take a short position. We record the current signal into the signal array. We utilize this function here. After computing the normalized range, which we already went over, we get the Hawks process of the normalized range using a kappa value of 0.1. We pass the close and the Hawks process into the strategy function we just saw to get the signal. We use a lookback of 168 or one week in hourly data for the quantile thresholds. We then compute the next log return, the log difference of the close shifted forward by one bar. We can get the returns of the strategy by multiplying the next log return by the strategy signal. We compute the profit factor using the strategy returns by finding the ratio of winning and losing returns. Then we plot the cumulative log return. This is the cumulative log return of the strategy just shown. We used a kappa value of 0.1 and a quantile threshold lookback of 168. This was again from using hourly Bitcoin data. It performs pretty well throughout the test period. The profit factor computed with the returns is 1.07. The win rate for long trades is 58% with an average trade of 2.9%. The win rate for short trades is 49% with an average trade of 1.1%. This strategy only spends 50% of the time in a long or short position. These results look pretty good, but the strategy does have two adjustable parameters, the kappa of the Hawks process and the look back of the quantile thresholds. So let's look at the profit factor across a range of these parameter values to see if the strategy shows robustness. Here are the profit factors across a range of five threshold lookbacks and five kappa values for a total of 25 versions of this strategy. Of course, some perform better than others, but all 25 have a profit factor above one, which means they are working to some degree. This is what you want to see when you are testing a strategy. There is robustness across various parameter values. The strategy appears robust and has had decent performance, but I would like to point out its main power is the exit. I use this exact exit on many of my momentum-based trading strategies. The entry for the strategy shown is rather simple and there are many different and often better ways to detect momentum. I like to keep the videos focused on a single topic, so I didn't want to introduce and explain some other entry, so I devised one using the Hawks process. But I think I've shown that this method has some potency for exiting trends in a timely manner. The Hawks process is a good tool to have in your repertoire. It is a great way to express self-exciting behavior commonly found when working with data related to volume or volatility. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching.